You're listening to That Gratitude Guy podcast with David George Brook. That Gratitude Guy. Learn about how gratitude turns what you have into enough through stories of motivation and inspiration. Wherever you are in your life and whatever you're going through, That Gratitude Guy is here to help you achieve great things and live a happier, healthier life. Change the way you live today right here with David George Brook. That Gratitude Guy starting now. Well, welcome, everybody. Yes, I am that gratitude guy, David George Brook, and this is my inaugural broadcast of my new podcast, which I'm very excited about. We're going to be on Transformational Talk Radio on the first and third Fridays of the month at 1230 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. But I thought it might be interesting to tell you some of the things you can accept, uh, expect rather from my podcast, interesting and inspiring guests, inspirational and motivational stories, Example of gratitude's immense, and I mean immense power, a gratitude tip of the show. I always like to give people tips they can use to get gratitude into their life, what it takes to become a gratitude believer, and various gratitude nuggets to chew on, and much, much more. So I will be talking about the many ways you can effectively incorporate incorporate an attitude of gratitude in your life. I think it's the only way to live. It focuses on what you have versus what you don't have. One of my pet sayings is gratitude turns what you have into enough. So many, many aspects of gratitude. And my guests will be a wide range of people that have inspirational and motivational stories, as I mentioned, and excited to introduce my first guest today, Mr. Scott Wetzel. And let me tell you a little bit about Scott. As president and CEO of Windermere Services Mountain West Real Estate, Scott is responsible for the development, operations, service activities, and growth of the Windermere Real Estate brand throughout the Mountain West region, Eastern Washington, Eastern Oregon, Idaho, and Montana. Scott has over 30 years of diverse executive and consulting experience in the high-tech and real estate industry. Prior to Windermere, he was co-founder and CEO of Continuo Technologies. And while at Continuo, Wetzel built a professional services company that employed over 25 employees in Washington, Idaho, and Montana. In addition, Wetzel was president and co-founder of Innovative Technology Solutions, a multi-million dollar microwave corporate sales and service franchise. And I love some of his community service. As a strong promoter of giving back to the community in which he lives, Scott speaks on business and entrepreneurial talks at Washington State's University School of Pharmacy, Whitworth University's MBA program, and Eastern Washington University's School of Business. Additionally, he is on the board of directors for Medication Review, and I might add, uh, recently stepped in as the CEO. So uh, you have quite a few more CEO credits than I have, so I'm quite impressed. And also, Junior Achievement in Eastern Washington, Mr. Scott Wetzel. Scott, welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. So happy to be here. And the, the kickoff guest, I kind of feel like, are we on Fallon? And it's his first night taking over for Leno. And, and I'm the first guy called out on stage. That's pretty cool. Yeah, well, it was, a, it was an easy choice for me. And, and to give the audience a bit of a context, tell uh, the listeners how you and I met. Oh, my gosh. I don't, you know, the good news is, is my memory is actually pretty decent going way back. We met, if you think about this, 1989. So wow. 32, 32 years ago, when I was just kind of uh, just trying to figure stuff out at Nordstrom and, and you were actually my boss's boss, which mm-hmm. is crazy, which was actually crazy. And that's how we met. And then it's just been an amazing relationship going forward since then. And, and uh, you're an absolute source of motivation and energy for me. And, and I just find that, you know, just thrilling. Thank you. Thank you. And obviously it's a two-way street, as you know, and if you think back on when you and I met back in, gosh, 89 and and late 80s, early 90s, how do you look at, let's just jump right in about the gratitude piece. How do you look at how you looked at at things with a grateful mindset then versus now? I assume that's changed. And if so, how has it? Yeah, it has. Absolutely. I mean, if you think about it way back when I was just a youngin, so to speak, right out of college, there wasn't a lot to really focus on from a grateful mindset because there wasn't as much to do to do in that regard. I mean, we were just getting started and, and I was just excited to kind of be able to be doing what I was doing at Nordstrom and, and then looking forward to going to the high tech industry. And although I do think that by accident, 
uh, I went and, and did a, uh, an attitude of gratitude just from a standpoint of trying to be the best at everything possible to be and not necessarily hard charging, but just to be myself and to be real, right. And to be empathetic even before I even knew what that meant. Mm -hmm. And I think now there's no question, you know, 54 years young, 50 turning 55 soon, I've been able to take a look at all these life experiences and not a single one of them, no matter how negative it could have been perceived, uh, from the outside, do I look at them as being a negative scenario? I look at everything as a silver lining and what did I take out of that? And that in large part, as you know, just comes from experience. I mean, you and I shared a lot of the similar experiences moving through retail and business. And, and uh, you just have to be able to take a look at perspectives, not half empty and not even half full sometimes. I like using the term, the glass is all the way full, half water and half oxygen. So if you look at three major careers of yours, Scott, you look at uh, technology, well, actually retail first, technology, and then of course, real estate and running all the aspects of uh, Windermere that you do now. How Something that really fascinates me is this relationship that we have with employees. And how has that changed in, in the three of them? Because I've said for a long time, I think as a parent, you and I are both parents, and for the parents out in the audience, I think managing children or raising children, I should say, and managing employees require the same skill, which is setting a great example. I don't see how you can be a great leader if you don't set a good example. But how did that change for you from retail to high tech to real estate? Well, you know, I, I've always gone off the premise when I first got into management, even back in the high tech world, I learned, I don't even remember who it was from, but was to praise activities and actions and not the person themselves. Uh, so it's a lot like coaching. So you praise one of your players for making a great catch or throwing a great pass, but, but you want to steer clear of praising them as an overall individual uh, simply because it then drives their psyche to think that potentially that they do no wrong. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but from a, from a really positive standpoint is as they're accomplishing more tasks and being more successful at them, that inherently builds them up to feel better about themselves and what they're doing. Uh, because we've all had employees that they weren't 100% of the time awesome. Right. right, they, right. They've got their areas for growth and development. And so I believe that, you know, by the fact of gratitude and mm -hmm. using gratitude as the way to keep everything as a foundation, that those throughout those three industries, applying that approach to being grateful for the activity they're doing and the tasks they're accomplishing or the project they're working on helped build them up without having to praise them specifically. I heard an interesting comment once, I think it was from a developmental psychologist who said with your kids, as you're raising your kids, it's very important to not say you're proud of them, you're proud of the accomplishment. Because mm. by saying you're proud of them on a certain occasion could theoretically indicate that there are times you're not proud of them. Mm. And that's not the case. I like that. And so if you stay away from being prideful or happy or appreciative of what they are as a human being, and you, because they all know that and you focus in on their tasks, then you don't do what the brain can do. And we've talked about this. How many times does the brain go to a negative space right. and want to think it's like, oh, great. Dad said he was proud of me. Does that mean he was proud of me this time? And he hasn't been proud of me in the past. Mm -hmm. So if you take that mindset with those, with your uh, employees as well, I think, you know, you're setting yourself up to just uh, be great. Yeah. Yeah. And I know you have three fantastic sons and speaking of, raising them and how being proud of them versus proud of their accomplishments. I like that. Did you notice that you could apply the same principle, as I said, about managing people to your raising your kids and then also through sports where you coach them in sports Did it translate that way? Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, if you take a look, I just have been wired this way from the very beginning. I was fortunate to play high school baseball and college baseball. And then as we started having our kids was able to immerse myself into coaching them uh, at all levels, all the way up to handing them off to high school. And it was very interesting to watch the development of little boys and how moldable they were, but also how um, sensitive they were and how you kind of really felt like you've got their entire psyche in your hand. And words, as we know, are far more powerful than actions. And so early, early on in my ownership path, 
I was also coaching my little boys. I mean, kindergarten, Matthew, my middle son was in kindergarten. And so, you know, he's now 25 years of age. So I think that helped develop to now to when I meet with the various general managers of my companies or our real estate agents or the owners in our franchise network, um, I try and take a standpoint of focusing on how to help them achieve success, be critical of their tasks and actions, uh, but yet not lose the overall focus on them being good people mm -hmm. and, 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 and kind of having that psyche in the palm of your hand each time. And so I've just, you know, and if you just like, you know, you know, you're the godfather of gratitude. So, I mean, <laughs> by, by being able to take it from a standpoint of look at everything that we have, boy, that helps, uh, you know, their mindset. Oh gosh, it's a, such a tremendous mindset too. And we always use the glass half full, but again, focusing on what you have versus what you don't have. When I, I do keynote uh, speeches, as you well know, and coach, do gratitude coaching and so on. And I tell a story about how a flight instructor of mine, when I was learning how to fly, told me that uh, you're going to be grateful that you listen to this next lesson. And it was all about vertigo and how you're going to need to listen to your instruments or pay attention to your instruments. And your body and your brain is going to say that you're a different angle, but the instruments are going to tell you something different. And I remember he said it so clearly, you're going to be grateful that you listen to this. And so I listened to him. And then sure enough, I got into the clouds about six months later and I thought I was straight and level and said I was in a 60 degree bank to the right. But I remembered that you're going to be grateful that you listen to your instruments. And I turned straight and level and I thought I was upside down. That's how messed up my brain was, but it saved my life. And yeah. so as you think back when you and I met and just throughout your life, where has gratitude kind of played a role? And maybe, you know, nobody gets through this life without some big challenges. And we've right. had some things that have been, you and I know personally that have happened to both of us that were very challenging. And I'm an advocate of still focusing on what you have, even if you just can even write one thing in a gratitude journal that day or whatever it might be. But what's an example of something where you really found that helped you? You know, there was, there's one particular, what I call trigger moment in my life that uh, and we sh I've shared with uh, you before. There was one point in time in my early thirties. So 20 years ago that I was fortunate enough with my current partner at the time to sell my technology company to a publicly traded company and picked up the family and moved back to uh, the East side, moved back to Spokane from uh, Seattle and was kind of sitting around waiting my standard wait period to be able to sell the stock that I got out of the transaction. This was all during the time of the Microsoft millionaires being launched and amazon.com right. going so right in the hotbed of the, the dot com explosion. And six weeks before I could sell uh, my first, I think at that point it was like $2 million worth of stock. The stock was trading in the 20s and it tanked to 38 cents. Wow. And yeah. And, and I thought I had had everything completely set up in place going forward where I was going to go into consulting and do all these great things. Um, and all of a sudden, you know, it was like life said, hold my beer. <laughs> here, yeah. here we go. And, uh, and so that took an, an, a deep down feel because Tracy, my wife, wasn't working outside of the home. She was raising our three boys. They were all in mid, uh, grade school. And we had moved back to Spokane and, and I was like, well, how am I going to pay the rent or actually the mortgage? How am I going to do all these things? And uh, we, sitting one night around the kitchen table, Tracy and I talking about our future. And we just started into this discussion about everything we had going for us. We didn't focus in on what had gone wrong because we, you can't undo it. It's like in the analogy of football, you can't unthrow the pick. You threw an interception. I can't go grab it back to the guy going, no, I didn't mean to throw that ball. Can you give it back to me? The interception has been done. And so I've heard Russell Wilson use the phrase, taking everything back to neutral. And mm. so we just unknowingly started talking about, we had a beautiful house with a roof over our head outside of our mortgage. We were debt free. We had three healthy boys, you know, all these things. And I just got this sense of empowerment and I was appreciative. And even back before the terminology came into place, what I was doing was just going through a process of recognizing being grateful. Mm, what were the wonderful. silver linings? And now looking back, it, that was completely what it was. Gratitude saved my life because I was in a very dark place as wow. you can remember, for a very short period of time. Thank goodness. Uh, but it was like, God, you know what? I mean, I'm worth more to my family gone than I am around. Mm. And switching to that point, component now, there's nothing. I mean, even this, you know, COVID that we're dealing with right now, there's so many silver linings that are coming out of COVID. 
uh, just and, and what it's doing for us to reconnect. You know, Zoom, we talk about Zoom fatigue. I look at it different. I'm like, I haven't spoken to Aunt Mabel in three years. I've talked to her twice this year already. Right. Right? Just <laughs> all these neat. days. That's so that was the one time it, was, it still sticks out to this day, left an incredible impression. You know, when you mentioned that about, and I want to get your input on this, uh, you can't unthrow the pick, the interception. And I think uh, I talk a lot in my talks about self-talk and people will say, I generally, generally don't forget names. And they'll say, why, how do you remember all these names? And I go, I just make a point of it. And it's really important to me, but then they'll, I'm terrible at names. And I go, you know, you keep saying that you'll be terrible at names because <laughs> these two ears hear what this mouth says. And so they say, well, what should I stay instead? I said, it's easy. You say something to the effect of, gosh, I'm surprised I don't remember their name. I'm, I'm good with names. I'll, I'll do better next time. And it's back to that, to put in a positive spin on something that people go down the negative path. So what when they said you can't unthrow the pick, what would you say to those people, those quarterbacks that came back that were there that, that threw the pick? How would you handle that when it's putting a spin of gratitude on it? Yeah, you know, it's interesting because two of my three boys were those aforementioned quarterbacks and they went on to play and a quarterback in high school, both of them. And when I wasn't able to uh, be there on the sideline, when they threw the interception and then they came off the field, but I just remembered strongly when they would throw an interception and they come off the field and they'd have their head down and I'd grab their face mask and say, get your head up because your teammates are watching you. You have to be neutral. You've got to have it. It doesn't affect you. Anything more than throwing a touchdown affects you because you're going to instill a level of confidence in the rest of your team. So as tough as it may be and as gut wrenching as it may be, and as upset as you may be, you're a leader and you must demonstrate leadership on the field. Now I'm having this esoteric conversation with third and fourth graders, right? Mm -hmm. To where they're looking up at the clouds going, Hey, that looks like SpongeBob. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a challenge. But just, and into this day, you'll talk to the boys and you've had dinner with them. You know, they have this mindset of, you know, there's really pretty much nothing in life that I can't get through if I just take the proper perspective. So, to, and I would, even, I would literally say to them, just like you said, I'm like, Andy, my oldest, you cannot unthrow the interception. You can't unthrow the pick. Mm -hmm. Focus on going forward on what you're not going to do the same time around to make that happen again and just take those actions. Well, and it reminds me too, we've heard it many times, but repetition is the mother of skill as we know. And, and the thing is not feeling bad that you fell off the horse. The thing that's important is to get back on the horse. And yep. there's some days I've never figured out why one day is so good and one day is so bad. Everything seems to be going your way, but you know what? If it's a good day, fantastic. Make the most of it. Be present, be grateful for it. Yeah, if it's a bad day, your, your main goal may be just to get to tomorrow. And that may be it too. So yeah. But so another thing in your world, which I'm extremely impressed by, is the relationship you have with Tracy. And as the mother of your three boys and just a fantastic wife, and you have a great relationship. And once again, un under the auspices of gratitude, how has that played in? And I kind of know the answer to this, but I want to see what you're mm -hmm. going to say, uh, how that's impacted the two of you, because you guys have a fantastic relationship. Thanks. I, you know, and uh, I would be literally nothing. Um well, he even start kind of getting choked up. I would be nothing without her. Wow. And God blessed me with meeting her and our paths cross crossing 34 years ago, been married now 30 uh, years plus. And she's not just my everything emotionally, but she's also the one who's never afraid to call me out, never afraid to uh, tell me when I'm being kind of a jackass, never, never for any of those. And, and we're both always the first to say is marriage isn't perfect. Uh, relationships aren't perfect, but it beats the heck out of being single. Mm. And it beats the heck out of being alone. And it, it's not really a negativity. It's like, I'd rather just be together with her and fight through the tough times than to be all by myself. Right. And so that's a strong motivator. And it's not a fearful motivator. It's appreciating even in the worst parts of, of the of the relationship over 30 plus years, it's still 10 times better at the lowest point, 10 to a thousand times better than being by myself yeah. and, and having her to be able to bounce ideas off of them. We're not only life partners in our marriage, but we're also business partners. She's our executive vice president, sets the culture for all of the, now we have 10 companies we own and operate. And she's, you know, she's the queen. I mean, if, if quote unquote, wink, wink, I'm the king, which is air quotes, she's the queen. In fact, in fact, the king pretty much just answers to the queen anyway, whatever she wants. 
And, and by the way, speaking of 10 companies, I do appreciate you still talking to me. I just want you to know that I just, I feel blessed. So thank you so much for that. But but really it's been, and when I met her, I I remember thinking, well, this doesn't surprise me knowing Scott as well as I do and so forth. And it's just been so nice to see that. So another thing, and I was going to ask you about with Tracy, but I'll ask you one of my favorite questions. So you're 54 years old, soon to be 55. What, what do you, what do you know at 54 that would have been, and you only get to pick one thing you would have liked to have known at 18. Uh, That failing is an acronym now that I've kind of developed and it stands for, so F-A-I-L to fail is first attempt in learning. Mm. And, you know, we're so wired and programmed in society, uh, especially in our country to, you know, failure is a weakness. If you fall down, you're weak. If you, you know, all these things that failure, 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 failure. Right. And I, if I could go back and write a letter to my young self and I would say, don't be afraid to fail, learn from it. Don't be a nitwit and repeat the same offense. Uh, but failure is okay to, to, to fall down is great. My dad, God rest his soul, sent me a, a card once the first night or the, the basically the first night we uh, landed, my team landed the Microsoft account for our uh, high tech company. And it said simply this, the definition of success is getting up one more time than you've fallen down. Yeah. And I was like, and I still to this day, David and he, I mean, this was decades ago. I still have that note in my briefcase. Wow. Wow. And it's so important. And we could go, we got to wrap up in a couple of minutes, but we could go on on probably an entire show just on the failure aspect and this, everybody gets a trophy mentality, which (laughs) I just think is such a shame because some of my biggest lessons like you and you and I know each other pretty well have, have come from where you really stubbed your toe, skinned your knee, fell down, and you didn't even want to get back on the horse, but you did. And, and you kept trying. So, uh, so we're going to wrap up in a second, Scott. So 54 years on the planet. What's if, if the, if the listeners from today, we're going to take away one Scott Wetzel nugget. If you heard nothing else I said uh, to consider for your life, what would you tell them? Look at everything everything not poly like a pollyanna but look at everything that the glass is half full Mm. okay i mean i know it's not realistic to say you know the mindset of the glass is all the way full half oxygen half water i like that look at things as the glass is half full the silver linings what can i take out of this that's that's the one thing that's it that's great the attitude of gratitude Yeah, it's so important. And as I always say to people, everybody has a choice. You can be up, down, left, right, glass, half full, half empty, positive, negative, grateful, ungrateful. There's all those things. It's a choice. Every day we get out of bed, you get to make that choice if you want to get out on the left side or the right side. So so let me mention a couple of things. And Scott, again, thank you so much for being my my inaugural guest. That was great. And I want to tell a couple of things for the listener. But I so appreciate you t- tuning in and this will be a regular, as I mentioned, the first and third Fridays of the month on 1230 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Transformational Talk Radio. And if you like what you hear, please subscribe. And I would mention, too, that I do grat- gratitude keynote speaking and gratitude coaching. And you can reach me at I use that gratitude guy a lot, that gratitude guy dot com. And also my email is David at thatgratitudeguy.com. So if you have any interest in speaking, coaching, I do books, and now I'm so thrilled to be doing a podcast. So my guest next time will be a gentleman by the name of Mark Caton, and he will share some great stories of resilience and the ability to bounce back. He's out of San Diego, California. So that is it for this episode, Scott. Again, thank you so much. Thank you to everybody for tuning in. My pleasure. You bet. And I am David George Brook, that gratitude guy. And I always end the same way. Remember, be grateful and never quit. So long. Thank you for listening to That Gratitude Guy podcast with David George Brook, where living with gratitude turns what you have into enough. Transformation starts now and you have everything you need to achieve great things. In a world that is constantly changing, there is motivation and inspiration right in front of us. And you can find yours right now. Don't wait. Visit thatgratitudeguy.com to get started living with gratitude today.